Hey everybody, welcome back to Blender Hair Series Episode 9. Today we're going to talk about how we can build the geom geometry node set up to create clumping like you see on this on the scene right in front of you. So let's get through the intro and get that over with. All right, so now that we're back, we can see here that we've got this really cool clumping effect. But the question is, how do you create this clumping effect in a geometry node? Because this doesn't come out of the box. Okay, I'm gonna remove the clump setup that I already have here, or just hide it. Um, it's just a bunch of random hairs. Okay, so we're gonna try to use these random hairs to sort of recreate this clumping effect. Okay, so let's add a geometry node system. We'll call it, I'm gonna add a new geometry node and I'm gonna go into the geometry node context. Cool, okay. Creating the clumps. Now a clump is basically one main hair with every other hair being around. So this is like the parent hair and we just need to create other child hairs. So the first step is to create child hairs. So let's press Shift A and we'll create something called duplicate elements. Okay, well, as soon as they attach it, nothing happened, but it allows us to duplicate the element that we uh, specify. So when I specify point, it will duplicate points, but these are splines, so we need to make sure that we specify splines. Uh, and there's a slider as well, and if I just increase this, you can see that there is something happening, but nothing is really changing, not really. Okay, so let's just make this something like five, just to keep things running smoothly. And nothing's really happening because even though I've in I increased the duplicates, all of them are duplicating on the same spot. They they occupy the same space, so you can't really see this. So what do we want to do? We want to sort of move them around so that you know they're sort of scattered about. So how do we do that? We already know how we can move stuff around. Okay, so we have this duplicate elements here. So what we need to do is we need to sort of offset the uh, hairs around so that it looks scattered around this parent point. So how do we do that? We already know we have a node for this. It's called uh, set position. We can do use this, but set position, if you just apply a big number, it's gonna set the position of everything. That's not what we want. We actually wanna randomize the set position around this point. So we just kinda wanna offset it a little bit from this point. So how do we do that? Well, we can use a random value Okay, so there's an input called random value and it'll generate a float from 0 to 1 and there is also a uh, seed value as well. So we can use this to sort of offset the hairs like this but if you do that immediately something bad happens. Okay, And this is partly because this is way too big so we kind of need to scale it down quite a bit. Okay, It's working kind of but it's actually randomizing the position of every single point. And we don't want to randomize the position of every single point of every single strand. You know, we want to randomize the position of just the whole strand as a whole. So we want each strand to be randomized the same way, but different strands to, different strands to be randomized differently. So how do we do that? Well, to achieve that, we actually need to We'll just disconnect this for now, and we'll need to use something called a capture attribute. In the attribute menu, we have a capture attribute, and this capture attribute will allow us to sort of save the information about each strand so that we can use it. For example, we could save the information of this vector, okay, and we can save the save it on the spline, okay, and if we put this random value on the uh, a brand so when I, when I even though this is a float and I connect it to the uh, vector field it'll convert it to a float so it'll basically be a value of 0 0.002 for example 0 0.002 0 0.02 sorry three times okay um, and then we can just pull this into the offset and basically what we're getting is an offsetting of um, Okay, the first thing is we, we definitely want this to be a zero centered value. Okay. The easiest way is really just to um, connect this maximum here. So we have a max value here. And then we can use a 
a math node to make to make life easy for us let's make this a multiply make this minus one we can make this maximum connect here and the minimum is a minus version of this okay so what exactly did i do here i have basically taken a value and i have made it zero so for example if this value is one it becomes minus one as the minimum and one is the maximum so it's always zero centered if i make it two it becomes minus two and two if i make it 0 0.5 it's minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 okay okay but we can still improve this because we don't want a random sort of float going into a, uh, a vector we can actually convert this into a random vector and really improve this so we need to specify this again we need to connect this again here and connect this again here and reconnect this here okay there we go so it's a vector now it's a vector not a uh, float and this will kind of make the clumping a lot better so as you can see um, and then we can we can actually so you, the basically what, what I've done here is I've created this sort of distance okay this this variable here is a distance value and if I would increase it it'll just increase the clumping distance and if you decrease it it'll decrease the clumping distance okay so what we can do now is just to make things a little bit easier on the uh, on the system because we don't want to deal with such tiny values okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a vector math node and I'm going to create this into I'm going to make this into a scale node and I'm just going to scale this random value by 0 0.01 let's make this 2 okay and uh, bring this up okay so now it's just scaling down the uh, random value okay so this way we, we have some kind of control we can kind of control a, a wider range here but it'll just scale it down accordingly over here okay all right so we have some clumping going on but we want a little bit more control over this clumping a lot of people know that clumping is best done if we have sort of a clumping towards the points like you saw in the uh, uh, the previous system so what we want to do is we kind of want to offset the position based on the sort of along the length of this so how do we do that well we already know we have a node called called a spline parameter node okay and this has a factor and the factor can sort of define like from z from zero to one the length of the hair so if we take a uh, vector map node again so if I just take this scale again and I have it here and I use the factor of the uh, spline parameter uh, we have a clumping that's occurring in this direction so that's that's kind of cool to control it we can actually use a map range node so if we go to the utilities there's something called a map range and you can just drop that in here and we can control these uh, the map range so we can see we can, we can control whether it's going outward or inward okay so we want we might we might want to define some like max uh limits so for example maybe three is the max you want to spread out there well one could be the minimum so that's another factor we can use another kind of control we can use so let's kind of bring that into um our control so we'll put that here and we'll put that here and we'll just kind of decide the max so we'll call this um the min we'll call root Dist so this, this allows us to define the root distance maximum of 2 and a minimum of 0.5 on the other hand on the other hand we have the tip dist okay so now let's see what happens if I reduce the distance we can actually get an effect like this or we can keep going further and get a wider spread that way interesting so this is how we create a clumping effect now you can actually go further than this we can control one last thing we can just add the amount as well we're just going to go to the uh, modeling tab and now we can just kind of or the nav tab and we can just really densen up our hair and there you have it if we go to the uh, rendered mode we've got ourselves a pretty interesting hair now in the previous example i've actually set the uh, hair color but i'm not doing that in this one but there is one one thing that we forgot how to make sure that the roots stick to the skull because once you start making some of these changes you can see that the roots get 
disconnected from the skull. So how do we make sure that happens? So let's go back into the geometry node setup. Okay, and let's add in one last set position. We already know this from our previous uh, uh, noise system. We, we just need to take the body and drag it in to get the object info with the body off. And then we need another set position. We press shift and place it here. I use another node called proximity, geometry proximity. The target is geometry of the object. Okay, and the position goes into the position. Well, everything got flattened to the head. That's not what we want. We actually want to use in the curve menu, the end point selection and make sure that the uh, start size is selected so we want to make sure that only the start hairs are selected and this will allow us to sort of reconnect and we can also if you really feel like it you could even add a resample node right here as well just to make sure that everything kind of gets smoothed out afterward especially after this and now if you go into rendered mode there we go pretty cool comping effect so you can use this for example to create dreadlocks and you can introduce some noise as well, uh, randomize it a bit with some noise. But this is pretty, you can achieve a lot of effects with this. So that's it, folks. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you in the next one.